Good to speak to you, Louis. First question then. Were you surprised by the timing or do you feel the club were left with no other decision after the start to this campaign? No, that's definitely not the best uh, timing because I think you always uh, wish to have a, a manager at the start of the season making his uh, transfers and, and all those, uh, let's say, tactical I think magic. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a difficult one, but uh, yeah, they tried, and, and I think uh, he hasn't worked. Um, we have seen over the weeks like difficulties uh, in finding uh, any kind of like plan or any kind of identity, people connection. Uh, it was it wasn't working, you know. May the talent of players some some games uh, has saved uh, the situation in some games, but at the end of it, uh, I, I think it's uh, totally normal to. To see in this situation, I don't like uh, to see any manager being sacked. That's not something I, I, I promote. But the thing is, um, this club uh, needs some something new. That's uh, that's obvious. And if Root is uh, is managing to do this uh, in a very quick manner, I think he can even keep this uh, position. I hope so, uh, for him. We'll get to Rude in just a minute because obviously you know him really well. But in terms of Eric Ten Hag, what do you think actually went wrong? Do you feel the players didn't believe in what he was telling them? What actually went wrong? Was it that translation to, to what he, they were being told on the pitch? Where was it? Where was this? Where did it break down for them? There is many things wasn't wasn't gone his way. Definitely, uh, there is obviously some injuries. Some of those players uh, initially there or whatever, like people say, he had a big uh, transfer market uh, uh, budget. Um, the players were not fit for the purpose. The purpose was to catch up with Liverpool, with Arsenal, with Man City. Uh, clear uh, identity uh, needed to be created. He hasn't done that. So this is a bit of communication sometimes where I didn't felt like really was uh, very clear. So all those things wasn't... Uh, in his uh, in his uh, side, the things what in his side was to win two trophies. That's what he defended himself with, uh, very clearly. Um, that's that for me. That was not enough in in that moment where we are looking for uh, teams with consistency, with uh, a strength in a way that uh, opposition can recognize that. Oh, we're gonna face a really really tough club there. Um, it was not that fear factor anymore. So definitely to build this was a priority and he hasn't managed to do that. So clubs uh, were coming in no travel, wasn't fearing that much. So that's um, that's where I think he, he, he didn't succeed there. Yeah. yeah, and Louis, if you look at successful clubs, they tend to bring in, you know, sort of a, a few players at a time and sort of build the team together. Whereas £600 million, pounds, you, you, you spoke about it, that was an awful lot of personnel, wasn't it? Was it almost too much control for Eric Ten Hag that, and, and that was too much in terms of he, he couldn't kind of get the right, the right measure in between what he already had and what he, he was bringing in? No, no, that's a very difficult task. Uh, you have minimum time for having an impact. You try to pick players that you may know better, may you understand better what they're going to bring to the table. Uh, he hasn't, he hasn't get it right. I think some players didn't perform. Uh, you know, some are, are still injured. So this was like really, really, really hard. There is other teams who managed to do this. Uh, so Chelsea is an exception because uh, they had like really uh, <laughs> a massive budget. I, I don't know what uh, they've done, but they managed to create something. Actually, now they are fourth and, and doing well. But yeah, when you look at the, the structure, they, they just didn't get the right players. I, I do think that when you look at the, the two tri strikers that they bring for me in my position, I, that I know I always had the luxury to play with uh, one really experienced uh, striker alongside me and I learned from him. Uh, it was Ridwan story. I had like a soldier. Those players really helped me. Those two young players are definitely players who can score goals. That's no doubt about it. But they they are not finished products. So it's it's really difficult. And they they, they tried they they tried really hard but they've been asked too much. So it was it wasn't fair and I think it's a mistake from from uh, from whoever was connected to the club on that, and just not the strikers is a problem, but it could be on other areas on the field. So that's definitely not only about the budget; it's about how you use it. 
Do you feel some of the players kind of didn't step up as well? So how much responsibility should the players take for this? Because actually, you know, throughout his tenure, there was a lot of public falling out, you know, namely starting with Cristiano Ronaldo, the Jadon Sancho situation. It looks like there's a situation with Marcus Rashford going on. You know, these, this was happening a lot. So should the players look at themselves as well? Definitely, that's that's the team. That's the team uh, environment. You have to be able to man manage the players. Have egos. The players have like uh, entourage that have like a bag uh, of uh, opinions. You have to deal with this. It's really really hard now. You have to deal with the scrutiny that this club have uh, all over the world. You have to play with that. And I think when you attract uh, such a a uh, difficult situation with Cristiano Ronaldo, you will have consequences behind. So he didn't manage to do this really well because we had Sancho then and now you have Rashford, as you mentioned. That's a difficult situation. That's obviously uh, players, uh, younger players, if they look at Rashford, who is uh, a big star of the club, um, it's obviously difficult to actually get the right kind of, let's say, uh, discourse, uh, some some uh, way to say things uh, and 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 have an impact on young players. That's that's the problem that uh, I think he faced. And that's why I said that this early on this interview, his communication wasn't right sometimes. And whatever like you, you have the ego or the personality and have to show a bit of character because your position need that, um, you, you're gonna have a big surprise because this uh, position is really, really complicated for all the factors I just mentioned. Okay, so that said, it is Ruud van Nistelrooy the one that can do all that. You know him extremely well. What's he got in his locker that perhaps Ten Hag might not have? Yeah, that's, that's for sure that uh, he will be asked all those questions uh, very quickly. Um, I'm sure uh, he's a very uh, dedicated uh, man and he would like to see straight away improvements. Uh, the first one is how we score goals, how we create chances for those strikers, definitely uh, it will have a bit of understanding. And when you are number two, you can't really do all those things because you still have to actually listen to the plan of the number one. So now it will have all the kind of materials to actually do that. I think he's a very uh, driving uh, individual. He knows exactly what he wants. He will communicate very strongly about his opinion. I think he managed to do that really well with his uh, club when uh, he had the opportunity to manage the, the first team in uh, in. Uh, in the Dutch league. So I'm very convinced that uh, it will provide a bit of, let's say, stability. Uh, I'm sure that he's not going to actually disrupt everything. But at the same time, uh, I think what we have missed, uh, it's identity going forward. Having a clear message to the opposition, this is the, the thing that, uh, based on the experience, it will provide that to the forward uh, players that we have, that's for sure. He managed to do as well, get the right balance in terms of transition going to defend and to attack in a certain way, you have to actually play a certain football. Uh, I, I'm sure that he's going to manage to do that. I wish him all the best. Lou, have you spoken to him? Does he want it permanently? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Have you spoken to him? Does he want the job permanently? Or I mean, you, you, you talk yourself about how huge the job is at Manchester United. Does Ruud van Nistelrooy want it permanently? I'm sure that uh, if any player former player, we had a chance, and I think he's a closer uh, to anybody at the moment, he will love to have this position. I haven't spoke to him, but I don't need uh, to ask him this question. I think he's a dedicated guy who wants the best everywhere he went. He wants success, he wants trophies, he wants to have recognition for his hard work, and that's what he's going to do. As a head coach now, he have a huge opportunity to do that. And uh, as I said, he's here to improve, he's here to learn. It's a different position, but I think the, let's say, the three, four months that he had uh, as a number two will help him a lot in that position, understanding the parameters that he doesn't maybe control yet. Uh, I think it's a big step, but I think he's ready, is ready for, the, for the job and for the challenge, because it, it is a challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge, that's for sure, because we've seen that eight managers since so Alex Ferguson haven't got it right so far, you'd have to say. Look, Xavi is another name who's being linked with the job. Do you like his style of football? Would he be a good choice? I think he will be. You know, all the, the managers who has managed to get an identity, I think clearly from all this experience that he had with Barcelona, no surprise, he was able to replicate that 
in a very simple way. In, in some way, he had like some very fancy training session with the players, but uh, with a banter. So all those things are, are new things that maybe the players will look forward. Um, but uh, again, if you ask me, I will prefer to see uh, Von Nistelrooy uh, doing well straight away, uh, getting the goals that we need uh, to to come back in that race. Uh, I, I, after that, obviously, the Ineos group will have to make choices, understand the, the options, the difficulty to adapt to a new um, a new championship. It's, it is not the same. You have to adapt with the players that you have. So all those, uh, let's say, big names uh, who has maybe never had an experience in the Premier League will have to find out. And I think if you take such a decision during the season, even before Christmas, I think you need someone who can uh, take care uh, as much as they can, uh, as quick as possible, getting us results. We need to get back in that uh, top half at least. And that's uh, where I think I see Von Nistelrooy able to do that. All right, put your friendship with Ruud van Nistelrooy aside for a second, just finally, Louis. Is there anyone else that you would want to see turning things around for Manchester United as soon as possible? So is there anyone else out there that you think they could do this job? Are you always, like, um, going to hear me with friendship in a way because it's where I know most uh, of their mentality and how we fit. You asked me, I would have said maybe Tuchel was my, my favourite. He was on the side, but I always had that drive. It could have uh, been great for, for my United. Mm. It's not available. Uh, but uh, I see that uh, maybe Zinedine Zidane is available. Um, it has been, like, a lot of rumours um, has, like, maybe expressed this desire to take France. I hasn't come his way yet because of Deschamps' success. So that's uh, that's the name that come to my mind. But uh, as I said, uh, it's uh, it's a very difficult situation to just come in into a team that is in blatant transition. It is really hard for anyone to just come in and bring the magic. We have seen so many managers, great managers, failed here. So there is a, a reason behind that. And it's not only about the managers.